Network Entertainment. You're watching and listening to Now Steaming, where we dish out our hot takes as Chinoy Millennials. My name is Stan C, and of course, with me as always are my co-hosts and the co-creators of So Asian Comics, Kimberly Mass and Cedric Cheng. And of course, we have a very special guest here. His name is Justin Chua. We'll get to know him a little bit, a little bit better in a bit. But first, um, I want to ask you guys about your part in the recently concluded Lanang Symposium, which took place uh, in early July, uh, and you know that's actually where we met Justin. So, what was it like being part of an event like that? Mami, I will get Justin's thoughts. But you first, since you know, uh, we're catching up for our viewers and listeners. Okay, so I guess ladies first. Then, uh, um, I guess we were really anticipating the event since we were informed about it last year and I was so excited about it, so hyped up. Even my mom was hyped up. So, um, attending the symposium made us a little bit more... Um, I guess inspired like for me right to create more content sometimes you get that burnout but after that symposium was like oh yeah I met like like-minded people and cool people like one of them is Justin already so you'll get to hear more about it later on but yeah I was so invigorated to create more content yeah you really uh, let people know now you're a Chinoy mom or dad approved type of uh, lady well, right? like yeah. that's how you presented yourself and I was like oh yes 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 she is <laughs> yes I am I'm not gonna flex that but yes I am <laughs> How about no. you, said? What was your experience um, being at the Lanang Symposium, being a speaker, and getting to talk about So Asian Comics? Actually, uh, on my end, it's a validation as a creative. And knowing that a lot of the things that Kim and I created uh, inspired a lot of people to do their own thing, especially in the realm of uh, dig digital medium and social media. Um, and also, listening to the other speakers as well, where I realized, like, Hokkien is a very rich language with a lot of different nuances and how, you know, it's very flexible depending on which circles you're in. Mm. So, All yeah. right. Uh, one of the people that we actually got to connect with at the Lanang Symposium is our guest for this afternoon. You mentioned content creation, said, and uh, this guy is one of those na talagang uh, leading the charge for people in our community, the Chinoy community, when it comes to content creation on TikTok. His name is Justin Chua, and he's uh, basically the Hokkien guy. Uh, yeah. What is it that you say at, at the end of every video? See it, hear it, learn it, tama ba? It's hear it, speak it, learn it. There, there. Oh. So I, I fucked it up. <laughs> Yeah. Early on, but then in the man. So, um, uh, you were at the Lanang Symposium as a panelist as well, deba. So you got to talk about uh, creating content in Hokkien for the Chinoy community. What was it like actually being in the room of actual people, which is different from you know uh, creating content for people online to consume? It was fun and inspiring at the same time because uh, normally my friend and I, Marvin, who would who's uh, also a panelist. He's mm -hmm. one of the guys making the Hokkien dictionaries. Normally, the, these gatherings for us would be just small dinner get-togethers and talking about random things in Hokkien. But being in uh, a formal ga gathering, like being in UP and, and having a host and all that and having a symposium. So parang, for me, it was very fun and very fulfilling having to share ideas and getting to know people who are of the same interest. Mm -hmm. Well, ako, I'm, I'm super happy that you made time for us here on Now Steaming. And it's a great chance for, a great opportunity for us to get to know you better. So I guess uh, in order to understand uh, your point of view as a Chinoy content creator, we have to know your story. So what's your story? Uh, you know, did, did you grow up here in Metro Manila? Did you go to a, um, not to profile you immediately, but did you attend <laughs> a Binondo Chinese school? No, no, I actually went to a uh High school that's not so well known in Paco Manila. The name is St. Peter the Apostle School. Oh, you're not going to But yeah, but well, I before I mean before I uh forget, thank you so much for having me here. It's it's an honor um uh for me to be able to share my story. I grew up there in that area where I went to high school in Paco Manila, and I grew up with my grandma, um, which was an uh, not really an extraordinary setup, but normally people would be more close to their parents, right? But for me, I, I was raised by my ama. So she is one of the first generation of Sin Kiao. Mm -hmm. And Sin Kiao is like the new migrants to the Philippines from China ever since the borders closed down back in the 1960s. So for a time period from, 19, from the 1940s to the 1960s, I don't know about the specifics, but um, for, a, for a time, 
there were no migrants coming into the Philippines from China. And yeah. okay. when the borders opened, my grandma was one of the first people who actually took the opportunity to come here to the Philippines. And so her accent is a bit different from the accent of those who migrated before that closure. So, um, so yeah, that's why I have the B and the, and the, do, uh, how, what else do I say? That's unusual. <laughs> it's hard to recall okay. no, when you're, when you feel yeah. pressured now, oh, I'm on cam, I'm on yeah. cam. <laughs> <laughs> I recall this. I'm not used to this. <laughs> yeah, you're basically third gen. Because if you're a first gen, that makes you third gen. Yes, yes, no? yes, yes. I, I think a lot of us, people our age, um, in our 30s or in our 20s, na chinoy dito sa, sa Metro Manila at least, uh, we're likely third gen or fourth gen. So um, you mentioned that you grew up with your ama, um, having been a first gen, or you know, for for some people might even refer to it as FOB, deba right? like fresh off the boat. Yeah. Uh, you know, growing up around her, did that force you to speak in Hokkien a hundred percent of the time? Definitely. <laughs> Although I spoke uh, Tagalog with my um, with other people at home, like the of course the household helper and and my parents, of course, they know how to speak Tagalog already because they were raised here. Whenever I would be around my ama, talaga, it, everything should be in Hokkien. And if I do mention a word in Tagalog, she will understand. But for the most part, it has to be in in straight Hokkien. Yeah. So I was forced, you know, as a way of saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I know. I know how you feel because I, I had a similar experience, and I, I'm just curious. Like, was she really um, that type of uh, ama that would say, "Okay, di di kong kwanawe," like dapat. Or, or for example, you say something in Tagalog, she's um, either she'll, going to like, she'll, uh, correct she'll correct you or she'll say, oh, can you say it in Hokkien? Yes, she would be like that sometimes. Oh, wow. And, and uh, for me, it didn't really, I didn't really mind it uh, when I was small. Parang I didn't really uh, feel much pressure apart from her telling me that, oh, dito, dito lang nang kya. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you have to be with, uh, with, uh, Chinese, so okay. so uh, yeah, but but from the used language at home, parang okay naman. She she would correct my Hokkien from time to time, but for the most part, it would be just uh, just say this, and and I'd be like okay. <laughs> so grow, growing up, na you know you have to speak to your ama in Hokkien. I, I'm assuming pati yung parents mo, di ba? You would speak to them in Hokkien casually. Did you have uh, classmates or barkada na Hokkien lang din yung gamit niyo, or was it a language that you primarily used at home? I use it at home. At at school, I actually looking back, I never talked to any of my classmates in Hokkien. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, but but my mom is a uh, half Chinese Filipina. So, but but she doesn't she doesn't know any. Um, she knows how to understand, but but to speak Hokkien is not something that she does. So, so I, mas I fluent really ka sa Hokkien than your mom. Yes. Oh, that's a very fair <laughs> setup. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. my my dad would speak to me in Hokkien, but for the most part, um, I actually learned more English from him. So wow. So parang it was a a mash of languages at home. I would speak to my my ama in Hokkien and and my dad in English and Filipino and my mom in in, in yeah Filipino. So. Okay, so you don't really use a lot of Hokkien, I mean, aside from your grandma, right? And you don't speak it at school, you don't use it with your mom or dad, mostly yes, like English yes. or Tagalog. Right? And it's interesting because like, I, I just want to know if it's um, yung Hokkien, is it like, uh, how did you become interested in the language, right? Like if you don't really use it in a lot of aspects in your life, say um, my cousin, like he doesn't really use it. And then he would say stuff like, okay, why would I bother learning it? If isang tao lang pala yung kakausapin ko in Hokkien. So so where did that interest start? It started in the usual um, association gatherings and, oh. and uh, I, I guess okay. you guys uh, okay. have a lot of experiences yeah, yeah. there. So, so when, uh, ito yung Chua Association ganun. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Oh, may ang pao. See, alam namin yan. Uh, there we go. Yeah, don't no worry. Mangho lang siya, siya pa eh, ganun di ba? Yaw kong nanang. So talagang uh, whenever, parang parang every every year, pa tiyong siyo, 
Sini Sini so I parang dapat oh grabe this is good. it's like a test <laughs> yeah 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 no I I remember distinctly going to these events and I came from Savior kasi so mas English and Tagalog yung ginagamit ko diba and uh, they would uh, distribute all of the ang paos to yung mga honor students and they would be speaking Hokkien nonstop and then for me just in one ear out the other wala na nating diyan at all and kasi y- yung basic na alam ko is just oh di tabe or like uh, just random words yeah. na I would hear in casual conversation which is different from what they would use at an event about right? these yeah, associations. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to your story, you would attend these events and you would understand what's being said by the aunties and uncles hosting. Uh, as the years went by, yes. <laughs> All because you would speak to your to your ama in Hokkien at home. Yes, at wow. home. And, and also my aunt. Um, I used to stay at my aunt's place a lot because my, our travel agency before used to be in Binondo and uh, my parents were out a lot because they had a lot of calls for the travel agency. So they would have a lot of business trips then. So for the most part, I'd be with my aunt and my ama. Who, my aunt is a first generation uh, migrant then. So. Okay. Oh, very interesting. Because like, so. uh, I think it's one of the travel agencies when you call, this is Lan Nang Ba? <laughs> yes, yes, Chinese, yes. <laughs> si, then they'll speak to you in Hokkien. I think it might be your travel agency. I'm not going to name drop it or maybe if you want to promote it yeah, later Yeah, if you want to uh, yeah, give them wanna... the plug right now. <laughs> Golden Lane uh-huh. travel okay, to very okay. Chinese Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it's really osmosis what I'm observing mm. from your story. Yes, but, it is. Uh, yeah. You, you learn by osmosis, by exposure, kaya yeah. natututo kang uh, mag-converse casually. Which yung nga, for, for someone like myself or for Sed, sobrang hirap kami to um, even grasp the idea of saying one full sentence in Hokkien. No? Um, did, did you ever think na, okay, uh, magaling ako mag-Hokkien, this is probably gonna give me plus points down the line pag naligaw ako sa jowa na Hokkien? Oh, yeah. Ah, na, yeah. Na, na. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately a yes. Uh-huh. It's a plus because when you uh, meet the aunties association. Yeah. Parang lagi yun yung nasa isip nila eh. Parang, parang, oh, dapat marunong ka mag-hokkien. Dapat mag, parang nafe-feed na sa brain mo. And as as I grew up, parang, for me, ah, okay, buti na lang. <laughs> I, I was raised with yeah. my, with my aunt and my ama. So, so it's definitely a plus in, in that aspect. But also for jobs and for work, I guess. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Like, have you ever scored a gig or have you ever landed a job just because uh, you're the quintessential Chinoy approved next gen? <laughs> I, I do teach Hokkien now, so I guess that's the most um, parang benefit I've gotten so far from from using the language. And uh, there, I'm aware that there are jobs in 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 BPOs and banks that, that offer uh career slots for, for those who can speak Hokkien. So uh, I would encourage people, young people especially, to to get into those, uh, oper- look into those opportunities and see what they can make the most out of. Where do you teach? Because um, you don't hear a lot of people who teach Hokkien, right? Let alone have these places where you can learn. Because even if you really want to learn at an advanced age, it's easier to grasp, diba? So where do you teach and who do you teach? I started by teaching uh, my relatives. <laughs> so there were two cousins from Savior who I initially taught. And then... Talaga ni name drop mo na mga Savior kasi mga Savior banu sa No, no, no. But, but uh, they, they needed help with their Chinese. Although they knew how to speak uh, sentences. And I would actually commend the curriculum of Savior uh, because, because of Father <laughs> Ari. Uh, it, it's just a matter of siguro, um, I don't know, maybe a different the stark uh, difference between theorizing a curriculum versus actually putting it into practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that's another issue. But <laughs> but I do teach online and, and uh, it's not under an institution as of the moment. Yeah. So Anusha, very informal in the sense na we send you a DM and then you give us your rates and then we come to an arrangement. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay, okay. So private, like some somewhat of a like private, private tutor. tutor. Oh, tutor, that's yeah. interesting. Right. So um, since you mentioned like education, right? I was uh, just curious, like did that lead to like TikTok? Because there's like learn on TikTok, right? Did that, le- did that lead or pave way to like your TikTok career right now? Yeah, education in TikTok. That, that was one of the campaigns of TikTok, I think early, uh, late last year, 2023. I think and I sort of uh, make made the most out of that by by initially teaching Mandarin mm. uh, and then later on shifting to Hokkien because once I made uh, that Hokkien video you know touring people in the grocery <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it it flew so for me uh, sabi ko 
ito na lang gagawin ko kasi parang mas interested yung mga tao dito. Yun yung mas mabenta. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, I'm just curious though. Like that video, did you use like certain hashtags to like I make did, it? Yeah. Oh, certain yeah. hashtags. Did you research or you're just like, ah, ito yung hashtags na gusto ko ilagay? Or... I, I just randomly typed. Random, okay. Then, okay. Menu, yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, you're a fresh grad from Ateneo, di ba? I remember you mentioning that during your talk at the Lanang Symposium. So you're in your early 20s. Um, wh- what did you take up in Ateneo? I took up uh, BS management and then two minors, one's in financial economics, the other is in sustainability. So basically, very stereotypical Chinoy. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> normally, if you're Chinoy, yeah, you go to Ateneo, you take management. up management, <laughs> expect it to make money. But financial, what was your minor? Financial, financial economics. Oh, See? Para, para lang maganda pakinggan. <laughs> No, kasi okay, for, potential for, na ano may potential girl in the future yan yung sasabihin yeah. it's just so nice <laughs> kasi for context kami tatlo we're all uh, graduates of uh, degrees and universities yeah. na not stereotypically Chinoy ah, like, really? you know, I went to UP they went to CSB Daniel, multimedia arts yeah, yeah multimedia arts sila. I mean, Ako, broad, uh, broadcast so you know very Whoa. un-Chinoy <laughs> Are you guys almost the same batch or? No, no, I'm, I'm two batches older the than the two of them. Uh, oh, mm. I see. Yeah, so I'm like over that? a decade older than you are. Yeah, I'm very curious yeah. about I uh, it, Usually people would say, right, like if it's our course, it's like, Botang Tansi, or you can't earn money there. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. like in your course, it's more of like, ah, yes, okay, yan, maganda yan. Mm. You can earn money there, diba? That's that's what they usually say. Right, right. So, going back to, to your story, Justin, uh, the reason I asked about your age and you being a fresh grad is because on TikTok, you present yourself as Achak or uncle. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, this is, this is very weird for me to grasp because I'm 34, right? And you're 22 or 23, and you already present yourself as uncle. Why? Uh, mostly because of Uncle Roger. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So initially, I wanted to call myself Uncle Justin and and just uh, always pull my pants up with the belt and then but I'll make it a uh, you know parang for, for comic relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So but then I said, oh, Uncle, maybe Atiak para para at least people might p- people who haven't heard of the word Atiak will will start to ask, oh, what does Atiak mean? And then and then they start to use it in their family. So that's why I I picked. And also, people, a lot of people have been telling me that my at my Hokkien accent sounds like an old person's accent. So, uh, parang I, I just made fun of that and and exaggerated it a bit and then uploaded it on TikTok. And so that's yeah. he that's owned I mean. it basically. <laughs> you owned it. Oh, you know, um, just just so uh, you, you're actually going into that topic already, right? Like you have some content about like, uh education like it's very educational you actually teach people about Hokkien and then you also have these really funny snippets also na parang it's it's two different sides of you so I mean looking at your content right now do you actually consider yourself more of a parang educational or are you more of like an entertainment type of uh, or you you feel like it's both uh after the Lanang Symposium, I'm inspired to make it more educational. But before that, honestly, parang for me, it was just all entertainment. And for me, it was all just fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but seeing as to how so many people want to learn more Hokkien, and I'm actually edified by that, um, I, I'll, I'll put in the effort to make more. I mean, I'll start to put in the effort to make more Hokkien subtitles. Because it's hard to do that. Initially, talagang ang sipag ko, lalagay ko yung... Uh, equivalent Chinese characters the dictionary ni Marvin uh, I would sorry type uh, words. What's, what's Marvin's last name Marvin C yeah mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I would get the words from there and I would copy paste copy paste on my phone for hours on end so uh, it, it does take a lot of effort but but I, I mean seeing as to how yeah the Lanang Symposium went it's where is it so who is your target audience for for your content? Because um, when you say Chinoy community, malawak pa rin yun, eh, diba? So yeah. are you targeting yung mga Chinois na mas Hokkien yung orientation nila or th- those who are not as fluent in Hokkien but grew up around it? Yeah, the, the latter would be would be the target. Those mm-hmm. who know Hokkien but would like to know, the, but would like to learn more. They uh, use some words on a daily basis, but to actually converse uh, might be difficult for them. And that's where I think uh, the point of um, may say them learning Hokkien is is very important. Because that's how you start to become fluent in the language. When you know a lot of words, tapos kalat, tapos you don't know how to use it. And then when you start to listen, to hear people speak it in a straight way, um, and then gradually you learn the the particles you learn the the structures and all that so um kaya siya eh. kaya siyang i 
going you know i- i- improve is what i what i want to say so parang it's like getting the closest or the nearest hanging fruit from the tree you know to to start to get more hokkien speakers in in the chennai community so that for me is is the plan as of the moment yeah so uh prior to the lanang symposium i honestly didn't know that there were hokkien content creators let alone that there was one yeah. pala marami pala kayo diba um but what makes your content different from let's say in kai thunderson tan who's someone you've collaborated with or any other uh chinoy content creator ancis also comes to mind yeah diba? yeah uh, ancis uh, is actually going to be on the podcast oh. like right after you today oh wow yeah yeah, yeah. so um inga, um i i know the difference between your content and ancis's content or like thunder's content. So like what in your point of view, what makes your stand out? Siguro sa tingin ko si Thunder, ang dami niyang nakaka-relate na topics, not just in Hokkien but also for Chinese in general. Like recently there was this trending Chinese video that people didn't know about and and people were all making a fuss about saying that oh China is is making this video. Ah, so to, Alice Guo. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we, we can say her name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so si Thunder pang ano siya eh, pang talagang all all categories uh-huh. so for me i don't know if uh, the average filipino will be able to relate to what i to what i post on tiktok and seeing us i mean i mean looking at the numbers talagang hindi siya for for all filipinos so uh, maybe that's my niche for a standard is more uh, about chinese filipino chinese in food culture and language so mm-hmm. yeah and ansis naman is about entertainment and humor and I'm actually I actually enjoy his videos a lot whenever we sh- whenever I share it to Thunder and and sila so natatawa rin sila <laughs> So um your your videos are also relatable eh? kasi diba um they touch on things that are familiar to us yeah. but when you create your yung content mo do you uh, create it with an inside joke in mind yung tipong ah um it's funny to us chinois because it's real or it's funny to us because uh that's what we see and hear from our elders or at home yeah 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 there's that dynamic um whenever i try to Uh, formulate the videos. Most of the time, I don't really plan what I video. Uh, I, I just, I just put it, put my phone on my tripod, and then think, uh, what's what's something funny that people might be able to relate to? And that's usually the mental process that goes in my mind. How do you pick? How do you say no. na? Oh, tina ka katawa. Uh, if I if I find it funny, <laughs> and if I show it to Thunder and and to others, parang oh, magbibenta yan. So, sige, post ka na. So, Yeah. Also, so mean. Ano talaga consultant mo si Thunderson? I see you guys like create a lot of content, yeah, and yeah. I'm just curious. You have like a content bank. Like, I mean, for for us, me and Cedric, like for the comics, we we actually list down all of our ideas because we might forget about it. But do you have something like that, or is it more of like, okay, I I feel like recording today. I have this idea. Okay, it's funny. Let me record it. Yeah, Ganun yeah, yeah. Ba My content bank is messy. Somewhere in my note. Okay. Some are in drafts. My, uh, some are drafts. in my drafts. <laughs> didn't TikTok okay, okay. some videos okay, that okay. were that haven't been posted yet. So that, I I do have something like that. And meansan whenever you just look at it, parang naka demotivate. <laughs> and dami mong pwedeng gawin, but at the same time you don't have much much time. And sometimes you feel demotivated. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, if that's a thing for yeah, it, it happens. happens. Creators mm-hmm. block is some. What some people would it's call real, it. It's a bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So w- when you create content, sabi mo, diba, you want to see what appeals to the Chinois, diba, yung sensibilities natin. What about uh, Chinois who might not be as in touch with the culture? So yung mga, um, let's say, uh, the, the stereotypical term is huanagong, diba, for better or worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people actually consider that an insult. Uh, but do you think na your your content appeals to uh, these Chinois who aren't as in touch with the culture? Uh, I hope it does, and I hope by seeing uh, the young young me trying to poke fun at at Honagong, parang and 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 making it a bit lighter than than you know than the its nature of being derogatory. Parang I I hope they're inspired to actually be in touch, be more in touch with the culture, um, because th- for so many reasons these people are not in touch with the culture. Perhaps because of their own volition and because of. Um, You know, just just being out of touch, just just by coincidence. So, I hope in one way or another they they do find um, affinity in in the content that I make, and hopefully, to you know, to make this this a thing, this Hokkien, you know, this Hokkien language more prominent here in in the Philippines. Uh, while you're doing all these content for TikTok, right, and that you draw from experience, right, how do you like 
draw the line between authentically portraying like the lived Chinoy experience versus you know trying to end up stereotyping you know the Filipino Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, that, that's kind of related to the question that Stan asked during the symposium, and that's a, that's an interesting question because we all know that um, racism is something that's very. Uh, rampant in the United States and in the Western world these days. No, but in Ito, it's, it's mm. becoming more real. Thanks, Alice Guo. Oh. <laughs> it, it really is becoming more real, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah. so, yes, um, it, it's a great question that Cedric asked. And I also asked you and Thunder this, this at the symposium because uh, there is that fear that the stereotypes are worsened. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, uh, let, let's go back to Seth's question. Um, I, I would answer it in the way I, I answered it during the symposium, which is to actually just get to know the people and and um, sometimes you know not to over exaggerate the stereotypes. It's good to poke fun at, at the stereotypes, but also um, to show people make content that that shows who you are as a person. And sometimes that's that, that's what I actually do. Um, I, I make raw vlogs. Recently, I just made one um, when I was out of out of the country in Japan. So. Uh, things like that, they see you as a normal person and, and going on live and talking to them, uh, connecting with your audience and engaging with them. I think those things are really what matters because Uncle Roger rose to fame um, because of precisely that. And I, I would think that he's doing a good job. Um, I would argue that he's doing a good job because uh, he's showing, yes, the stereotypical t side of, of, you know, uncles, Chinese uncles, but also he's he's owning it and he's he's proud of it he's proud of the culture and and that's something we have to be doing as you know yeah. you know as, as a content creator i'm sure the comments sobrang dami niya diba like you get all of these comments yeah. some well meaning others just downright terrible yeah. stupid <laughs> even yeah. right like for me yung pinaka tumatatak is when i blew up on tiktok during the fiba world cup uh, ang daming nagtanong agad oh pag naglaban yung gilas in china kanina ka kakampi <laughs> So I had to create a what? new TikTok just about that to address na, syempre gilas si Chichiri ko. Kasi na, hype man ako ng gilas nun eh. Pangalawa, taga rito ako, di ba? So ba't ko yung Chichiri si na Cho Chi and the rest of the Chinese team, right? When nandiyan naman si na CJ Perez, si na Scotty Thompson and, and gilas, right? So um, what's the worst comment you've received at paano mo sinupalpal, if at all? Uh, maybe one of the most recurring comments that I've received. I, I don't know if, I don't know if this, it's the worst, but but the thing that annoys me is I'm in the West Philippine Sea. Uh. Parang, parang, what? I, I'm Filipino. <laughs> At, atin talaga yan. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I responded to it by with a joke. Sabi ko, I, I was, it was 8 a.m. that time. I, I just woke up and I saw that comment. Sabi ko, ah, it's umagang umaga. <laughs> so sabi ko, ano ba yung sinabi ko nun? This is the one that no, you taught people how to say, I'm uh, umuwi kayo sa country nyo in Hokkien. Is that the one? That's the that's the recent one. This one is just like me on the on my bed saying na, ah, sa inyo na, sa inyo na, kunin, kunin mo sa guard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very, uh, no, that, 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 these types of responses, like kunin mo sa guard yeah. or, ah, gusto mo sabihin sa mga Chinoy, bumalik sila sa bansa nila, gawin mo in Hokkien, yung nanggagago ka. <laughs> that's a type of response you would get from a millennial or a Gen Z. Like, yeah. someone like Teresita Angsi, for example, would not respond that way. Oh, no, no. Father no. Ari D would probably not respond yeah. that way yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. One, because he's Paris, he's yeah. an educator. Siya. Third, it's because he's from a different generation. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, for, for someone like you, na you're much younger, you're actually more willing to punch back. Yeah. Right? So, uh, where, where does that bravado come from? Is it really just a generation thing? I think it's a generation thing. And also because of the uh comedic comedic for, for for the comedic aspect of it parang parang okay when i say this it it's probably funny and it's not going to be so uh very negatively offensive probably it's parang parang ano lang parang nagkakantsawan lang magkakaibigan so yun yung yun yung the way i i bite back and i think that's a gen z thing these days i don't know <laughs> no, that, that, that's interesting to me kasi inga, you say it's a gen z thing there's also the, the aspect of nagkakantsawan lang as friends right Th this whole thing where you bite back and you punch back is very interesting to me because not everybody is willing to do it yeah, yeah right yeah. so where does that uh that that humor come from kasi sabi mo nga your content is hinged on a lot of comedy yeah, so yeah, yeah. where where does that sensibility come from the sensibility of Wanting to bite back, uh, yeah, or even just being funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's you know what what I want because is not 
to post positive content even if it's a bite back because if it's a uh, if it goes too political i probably veer away from that but but if it's something that's uh positive i, I definitely do i definitely do it and for me because i have a a relatively optimistic world view i guess that's that's kind of deep but um but i do have that and so that's what that's what that's probably where it comes from you know this uh desire to make people laugh and and um make all those funny videos so i i guess that's where it comes from not really a pessimistic uh view on things you know that that uh yung kailangan negative yung uh, there's this one tiktoker i won't mention okay <laughs> all right but whenever i see his content lagi yung yung nagbabait back siya lagi siyang kinokomentan ng uh, yung mga amin ng West Philippines si uh, uh, kamag-anak ka ni Alice ko no spy ka no tapos lagi siyang negatively defensive and i think that that just uh, sparks a lot of you know um, what do you call that parang mas nai-inspire silang mas gusto nilang bumawi sa iyo pag ganoon eh unlike kunyari kapag uh, you joke around The, the way you bite back is in a joking way. Um, parang lalang maan na sila. It's like dealing with bullies. So so whenever dealing with bullies, it's always positively and and from a distance. So that that's I guess that's where it came, comes from. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I get your what what you're trying to say also yeah. about that. No, I actually didn't think about it that way because like you know we, when we were in the symposium, they actually asked us like how do you deal with ne- negative comments and yeah. usually. Yeah, I like I like the way you attack it. It's 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 different, right? Just to make And, them speechless. Yeah, yeah. So they they hindi na sila ma pa, kumbaga parang yeah, mas yeah. tama ba sa mas stun na lang sila. Ma, mas, <laughs> you don't give them ammunition to like bite yeah, back. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, does this like burn you out? Like you mag type of con- content like that. I'm pretty sure you get comments like that. And how do you like deal with it as a content creator? Parang what do you do aside from creating content? Hindi naman parang yeah. not unless you do that. Like 100 percent every day. Like you you just churn out content. So I'm pretty sure like meron karin mga downtime. What do you like doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I make it a point not to check the comments if I oh. see a lot of negative. If if there's like a chain of puro mga negative comments about. Chapter kung if it's about something I said that's that's uh, probably offensive or something I, I would I would definitely address that. But if it's something just to um, trigger me, parang hindi ko na siya titingnan. And and uh, one thing I do is I mute my TikTok notifs, so I don't really get the notifs, and it doesn't really ping as much, so it doesn't really bother me unless I actually go through them one by one. So yeah. You mentioned kanina that you try to steer away or veer away from anything too political, but you did create something. Na yung yung six days ago, uh, as we're recording, uh, the West Philippine Sina Banat, which yeah, yeah, is yeah. actually political. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah when you yeah, think yeah. about it, like a lot of the things that we put out there are political. Even this podcast is political. The fact that we're saying that yeah, hey, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. Chinoy, and it's a political animal. <laughs> right, right, diba? So, uh, ha- have you come to terms with that? Na parang even if I'm poking fun at the culture while also lifting it up it's still political because we're trying to set ourselves apart now we are chinoy we are not mainland chinese yes, yes or that yes. we have our own culture etc yeah yeah definitely what i meant by not being too political because i have a tendency to <laughs> to overshare my political opinions to my friends and uh, i try not to do that on tiktok so uh, what i mean by not being too political is yung parang uh, trying to pose as a political i don't have my masters yet <laughs> Right, right. I, I'm not credible yet, so I, uh, I don't want to give right. out those opinions if I don't have the right cred- credentials. And I think that's a great way of drawing the line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you you mentioned like you, you, your inspirations, like your your grandma, right? And mm. then you you have like uh, a lot of followers, a lot of following on TikTok. I'm pretty sure nakita na nung mga relatives mo, yung yung family members, mo, <laughs> yung content. I'm just curious because like it's the same case for us. It it blew up, right? And people were We're, we're asking us about it, asking our relatives. So, what's your reaction, nila, when when, <laughs> when your your parents, your your ama saw saw your content for the very first time? My mom, she understands Hokkien a little bit, but. But for the most part, she finds it funny because she sees that she's a mom. Then what's funny is my aunt, who uh, 
is very well connected to our, with our relatives in China. Actually, I'm going there to stay there for a month next month. So I'm wow. going gonna to see them. Ooh, and my, some of my videos would be sent to them. And I don't know how they feel about it. Some of them. <laughs> yeah, you'll find out. I guess you'll find out. 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 You'll find Since we're talking about yung mga feedback ng relatives, at the symposium, one of the first things you said is this comment you would always get from your ama, yung gongaya. Yeah. Gongaya, yeah. 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 Which you've also incorporated into your own content, right? Yeah, yeah. So for you, parang sabi mo at the symposium, it's become a term of endearment kasi you associate um, Hokkien and the culture with your ama and these are mostly pleasant memories. But um, what do you think of the idea na it's also some form of generational trauma. Because, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. our elders, let's face it, they're not the best at communicating. They're not. And they're, yeah. they're not the best at expressing their emotions as well, right? So, how do you feel about um, you know, that that way of communicating and how that could have adverse effects on the next generation and the next generation? Yeah, yeah. I, I think probably um, by just putting it out there, people would, of course, poke fun at it and and... Uh, you know, parang make 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 jokes about it, but I hope it stays that way, and I I hope um you know people uh don't really pass down the same generational trauma to uh the next generations. What I would always tell the the parents who who I've uh dealt with because I used to teach kids and and uh my aunt Rin who. Uh, wants to encourage her kids to learn more Chinese is to encourage the kids in a positive way and not to um, not to force them if they don't want it. Because the best uh, desire for learning is if the person actually wants it. And and everyone, even kids, they're 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 persons, and we have to show them the good side of of learning the language. Um, one way I deal uh, with my friends who talk to me about. Ah, uh, they they tell me, gusto kong matuto mag Mandarin. Ah, uh, ah, uh, kailangan ko ng motivation kasi tiyata mada ko eh. To. So pinapakasa pinapakita ko sa kanila yung <laughs> yung sa JK Network. JK Network is a manpower service and they send mga uh, salaries <laughs> for 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 the job opportunities in Should Mandarin. Should we speak their language? Their language is para. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. There, there was this one friend who I sent that to and talaga motivated siya kasi, kasi yung sahod, yung language premium, talagang malaki siya. So, uh, yeah, so so the bottom line is uh, as for generational, for the generational trauma, I, I hope people don't, uh, you know, don't, really pass that down <laughs> but but that they start to realize that the best way to actually pass down the lang- the language which is in this case Hokkien is to inspire them in a positive way such that they want it for themselves and not for others is there any like future projects that we can expect from you or perhaps siguro you can tell us like uh, the people you want to collab with well, well I guess one of them is Ansys yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's put it on the pod yeah, yeah. maybe they'll hear maybe it, they'll hear it. <laughs> so uh, as for future projects shout out <laughs> Lang- L- Th- Thunder and I are planning to uh, put up this We're, it's still in the works and and I don't wanna I don't wanna okay. um, give too much details but it's a language center that's uh, hopefully going to change the the education landscape for Chinese. Mm-hmm. Um, so think, come on, right? Okay, I'll stop there. Okay. <laughs> because Thunder might see this and okay. then, but 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 no, me that. say come on, you know, it's already no. Yeah, <laughs> diba? I'm having can... flashbacks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or triggers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the uh, pin posts on your TikTok profile is you critiquing the Chinoy accents and the Chinoy use in Manopo. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Manopo as a franchise, tumatak siya sa akin eh, growing up because I was like 10 or 11 when mm. these movies came out to the point that it influenced my my undergraduate thesis. So oh, wow. from your perspective as someone who wants to encourage the use of Hokkien, as someone whose Hokkien is actually very, very good, uh, what do you think about uh, the way that Chinoy culture or that Hokkien is used in mainstream media, you know, you know, projects like Manopo, My Binonda Girl, Can't Buy Me Love, all of that stuff. Of course, these projects are led by the mainstream actors, right? And and it's hard for them to learn the language from at a very short time frame with a limited 
uh, amount of resources. Unless and, you know, sila, like Richard Yap or Kim Chi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's hard for them to, like, to learn the language. But I, I wouldn't generalize because there are some scenes in Manapo where the Hokkien is actually not bad. So some actors, nakuha nila yung uh, accent and yung diction and, and the way, you know, native Hokkien speakers would say it. So there are some aspects naman that are good. And there are some, uh, I mean, looking at the whole Manapo series, talagang the, the stereotypes are really out there, right? So Yeah. Uh, Imagine when this started, the stereotype of the Chinoy was kidnap victim. Yeah. That's how far back it goes, right? Uh, in 2000, uh, 2001, Aramina's character was kidnapped. Literally, that's the yeah. first scene of the movie. <laughs> Right? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or triad, right? It's 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 usually those. Yeah, these controversial stereotypes. They they were they were shown in mainstream media, and and that's something that I don't. I can't really say if it's um, a, a good thing that it's out there. I I I, I might need help. I I might need to uh, you know sit on it uh, a bit more. But but as for the Hokkien, uh, I, I do think that the actors tried did their best. And the the instructor yata is uh, from Ateneo, eh, if I'm not mistaken. Si, si Auntie Jane. Oh, <laughs> Auntie Jane. I, I, I want to meet this Auntie Jane because yeah. I want to ask them kung na frustrate basila with Tirso Cruz the Third yelling Chop Cheng. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, even Lord. want to count how many times he actually watched the movie to, to, to be able to get it, the oh. accent right. I can't even imitate it. Oh, my God. I can't even imitate it. No, because the pagkakasabi ng Tap Ting, alam natin, oh. because of our, our dads, it, likely, right? Yeah. Or our uncles or whoever. My, you know, my dad never actually said Tap Ting, but like my uncles did. <laughs> tap Ting. Oh, my, my dad has said Tap Ting, and it was like really hard. I mean, oh. it's, it's hard. Like, Tap yeah. Ting. Yeah. So I'm for Tears of so Cruise the Third to. to <laughs> You know he's mad. <laughs> no, he messed it up so bad. It kind of sounded like Jap Che, the the. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or or um conversely, naman, uh, if we're gonna talk about the authenticity of it all, yung parents ni Jay Manalo, uh, in Manopo too, the 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 I'm Emerson gonna, character gets stabbed, <laughs> oh? and then they yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. Cry, oh Emerson Bolo. <laughs> That's the type of shit that sticks with you. <laughs> you, 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 want, you don't want it to be a core memory, but it actually ends up in your core memory. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that film or that scene. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, you, yeah. you should, you should. Yes, yes. Yes. You can actually have a, a, a picture already. And it's our... funny because it's true and it's Emerson real. Emerson Polo. <laughs> TikTok, I, TikTok content, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, how real is this? <laughs> so, uh, you know, just, just to uh, steer away from the funny stuff and to wind down here, um, what do you enjoy the most about what you do as a Chinoy content creator? The food. <laughs> okay. What do you mean the food? Um, because uh, ever since I, I got the right amount of followers. The I, I've started to receive messages and and from restaurants asking me to promote their restaurants. Oh shit! <laughs> okay, right. And as someone who doesn't really know anything about food, all I know is to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Parang for me, huh? What's this? So why are you asking me to make content for your for your place? And I, probably it's because you know they appreciate the content and they want the the promotion. So. Uh, for me, that's that's a good plus. And whenever I get invites, oh, sige, sige, Gila. So influencer ka na talaga. No, no. <laughs> no, you are, right? If you are, you are shit like this, right? Like you are. No. So but what does your mom say? Na, oh, you're getting uh, free food at a restaurant or you're getting paid to create content. Kaka-tiktok mo yan kasi. Yeah. <laughs> yung, yung mom ko kasi hindi siya traditional land ng parents. She's very, actually very kin siya. Very kin-kin siya and very uh, so, Sorry, what's kin-kin? Kin-kin na is parang very gentle. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So very, very, very ganun siya and uh, nagugulat nga yung mga kaibigan ko minsan pag diadala ko sila sa bahay parang ang bite-bite naman ng mom mo ba't ganyan ka? Parang <laughs> 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 so yeah she's actually very supportive about that and, amazing yeah. um, speaking of support uh, when are these big superstores like SNR and Landers gonna sponsor you? because the post oh. <laughs> blew up the device you taking the TikTok audience to, through Landers in Hokkien <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't want to be too presumptuous, but but you can please message me. <laughs> I know their owners are are uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? so you know SNR Landers, man. I hope someone from your team is listening. Sponsor this, <laughs> and it'll create more content taking you through their big box chain. Yeah, yeah, I I hope to do more of that. Nga. parang I've been doing less of yung mga tours in places and and have been showing more um, faces and and uh, people and and not much of the. The places and and video recording the 
the random objects around and telling people what the Hokkien equivalent is. So I think I might do that more para para rin, you know, more Hokkien words could be out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, last couple of questions from my end. Um, are there any comments or any messages from mga Chinois who are not Manila based who say na, hey, uh, I get it na that's how you guys in Manila are, but that's not our lived experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's this TikToker who actually spoke Hokkien way before uh, any of us did, way before, I, I guess, earlier than Thunder. He's from Cebu Ata. Mm-hmm. And this is on TikTok. He's on TikTok. And he's from, I, I, I don't know what, what place he's from. I, I need to look at my. Uh, TikTok to double check, but but uh, a lot of the words in other provinces, you would be surprised. They would be mixed with the local language. Yeah, and I was surprised when I met Sam. They call Kalbo in Cebu opao tau. Okay, because Bisa in in Bisaya op, upao is Kalbo. Uh huh. So so yeah, parang examples like that would surprise me from time to time, and and whenever people would tell me, oh, that's not how we say it, and that's not how we are here in the province, parang parang I I, I get it, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I totally understand, and uh, that's something that we should also promote. If only I could I could just go <laughs> go to all the mm-hmm. provinces, you know, all around the Philippines, uh, and try to uh, do that. I would I would definitely want to do it because they're very small. They're minority, na nga, but they're also smaller than yeah. than the population here in Metro Manila. So they definitely need the exposure. Yeah, because in the process of creating this podcast, we realize that we aim for Chinoy representation, at least in this medium. But yeah. we're not going to be on behalf of every Chinoy. Because yeah. there's yeah. Manila yeah. Chinese yeah. with uh, Cebuano Chinese, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my mom's actually Chinese Bisaya. So y- y- nga, um, if she were in touch with the Chinois na Bisaya, she would probably say in a very different you lived experience. Yeah, but she grew up in Binondo. Oh, gets ba? So <laughs> yeah. very different yung ano yung yung perspectives, de ba? So I, that's why I asked you that question. If yeah, yeah, they yeah. ever engaged with you and said na I get it, that's funny, but that's not us. I so far pa naman, so far wala pa naman na nagsabi na sobrang iba yung the way you portray this um, joke, for example. And uh, I, I do have friends from Cebu, sila Keith. <laughs> Hello, Keith. Uh, and and. Uh, they they find the co- content relatable, but but as for the terminology, siguro with with Hokkien words, parang uh, yun lang yung nasasabi nilang magkaiba. But as for the the culture and things like that, parang parang same lang. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Kim said, any other questions for for Justin? Well, I guess um, yeah. As fellow wow, fellow content creators, yeah. like, uh, is there anything that you can give like to anyone who's listening to the podcast right now? Maybe they want to be like future content creators. Oh, like, yeah. any advice that you can give to them, whether it be like on TikTok or different platforms? Any message? Yeah the the problem that used to trouble me when I was starting is. Um, this thing of analysis paralysis, parang, parang thinking of what to post and trying to be very systematic about what I want to say and what I want to, what I want to record and and honestly for for people who want to just uh to to do TikTok just get out there record the video um and and post it see if people like it and, and just do it because <laughs> if the more the more you tien in Hokkien the more you, you the delay. more you delay yeah. diba? parang parang uh. You're not gonna learn because the way you make content in TikTok is actually uh, by trial by trial and error. So some TikTok videos will definitely not fly if the target market is not mm-hmm. you know, parang hindi mo na kuwa yung target market mo. So uh, and sometimes we have to just we just have to accept that and to, and to just keep on making videos, learning about the algorithm, learning what uh, appeals to people, uh, and for sure if you keep on doing that without giving up. It's you'll you'll make it and and you'll fly. So uh, don't be concerned too much about that. Honestly, just have fun uh, recording videos, and that's how TikTok honestly just changed the landscape for content creation. Is for people to actually enjoy making videos and show who they really are. And you have to be genuine. You you cannot um, fake your Hokkien accent to sound like a non TDK because I do sound like a TDK whenever I speak Hokkien. So so that's me. So so I project that on TikTok. So. Uh, for others who want to do the same thing, I really encourage you because we do need a lot of 
uh, Hokkien yeah. content creators, more of them. Yeah. yeah, don't don't be afraid of the. I think uh, it's a term on TikTok. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, Justin. It's called flop era. Like flop if you, era, flop yeah, era, yeah, 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 that's what they call it. Like if your video doesn't fly, so yeah, I guess don't be afraid of that. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, totally. Uh, ito, uh, Justin, can you promote your TikTok and your other social media accounts in Hokkien for our listeners? Uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, 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 Justin Chua 24. Uh, they on Instagram as uh, Justin Chua 24. Facebook as Justin Chua. So, to Oh, yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> 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 go. You know, Justin, thank you so much. Sobrang fun. Uh, thank just, you so you much. Know, breaking this down with you and picking your brain then. Because, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why we created this podcast. And we're glad that we're reaching out to more people and that we're engaging with content creators uh, like yourself, like Ansa C, whose uh, episode should be on your feeds by the time you're listening to this mm-hmm. and watching this. Um, it, it's really fun uh, getting to see... Uh, uh, you know, the, the creative process and what you bring to the table. So thank you so much. It's a for, privilege. Thank you, you know, so much for having me here. Yeah, thanks for, for being yeah. with us today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And as we wind down here, syempre marami tayong ginagawa here as part of Now Steaming, this new season that we're doing in collaboration with our friends from the Pod Network. We've got many guests in the pipeline, uh, but we also have the projects that we do individually. So Kim said, let the people know where they can find the latest edition of So Asian Comics. Uh, we're mostly active on Instagram and Facebook. You can just literally, literally find us at So Asian Comics. Yeah, so I guess, you know, after hearing Justin, maybe we can explore that uh, comic on TikTok. So maybe there, but uh, it's at So Asian Comics everywhere. Um, as for me, my personal is Kimberly Mass for Cedric. It's uh, on Instagram. I'm mostly active there. It's Cedric C. Cheng. Mm-hmm. And for me, it is at underscore Stan Scene. And for the show, it's at Now Steaming Podcast. I do have a TikTok. I'm not very active there. I post some highlights from my commentary in WWE uh, on TikTok. And uh, if you want to find the video where I make fun of people who ask kung gilas or china ba yung oh, yes, it's right. on TikTok at Stan C Says. That's uh, Stan C S A Y S. Sorry, uh, Stan C Says. Uh, and with that, um, that brings us to the end of another episode of Now Steaming. So thanks for catching this one. And we'll see you on the next one. Now Steaming is hosted by Stan C, Kimberly Mass, and Cedric Cheng. Our show is produced by The Pod Network. Ronel Cheng is our writer and researcher, Zeke Lagran is our editor, and Jasper Manalang is our podcast manager. The opinions of podcast creators, hosts, and guests are not necessarily reflective of the official stance of The Pod Network Entertainment, its hosts, or other network programs. The content created by the people behind the podcast is personal and not meant to harm any religion, ethnicity, group, organization, company, or individual.